Hi guys, Yumiji here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a sew along to one of my latest summer patterns, Simplicity 9329, a fantastic little dress. Let's get started. All right guys, if you're new to sewing or you maybe just need a refresher course, you can watch the Sewing Basics video linked in the description box below. However, if you're completely new to sewing, sewing along with a pattern does require a certain level of sewing knowledge. So if you're completely new, I suggest heading over to sewacademy.com where we teach you how to sew from the very beginning and every course builds on its own. The first five courses are absolutely free, no credit card required. Sign up, try it out, and then come along and sew with me. Okay, so we're gonna need pattern 9329. And remember that on the back of the envelope, you have a list of suggested fabrics along with yardage based on the size that you're choosing. And of course, any notions you're gonna need like a zipper and elastic. So you're gonna cut out pattern piece number 10. This is our skirt front. You're going to cut two. You're gonna cut out pattern piece number 11. This is the skirt back. You're also going to cut two. You're gonna cut out pattern piece number four. This is our sleeve and you're gonna cut two. You're gonna cut out pattern piece number six. This is the guide for our elastic. You need to cut two. You're gonna cut out pattern piece number eight. This is the midriff front. You're going to cut two on the fold of your fabric and one on the fold of interfacing. Pattern piece number nine is the middle back. You're gonna cut four of fabric and two of interfacing. You're gonna cut out pattern piece number five. This is our sleeve binding and you're going to cut two. This is cut on the bias. If you want the back ties, you're gonna cut out pattern piece number seven. You're gonna cut two and this is also cut on the bias. You're gonna cut out pattern piece number 12. This is our pocket and you're gonna cut four. You're gonna cut out pattern piece number one. This is the bodice front. You're gonna cut two. You're gonna cut out pattern piece number two. This is the bodice side front. You're also going to cut two. And lastly, we have pattern piece number three, which is our bodice back, and you're also going to cut two. Once you have everything cut and interfaced, we can start sewing. Let's go ahead and start with one of your fronts, one of your side fronts, and one of your back. You're gonna do the same exact thing you see here to the other pieces for your side, your front, and your back. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a really quick press. I'm working with a linen, and so I want it to be nice and flat. I don't want any ripples or folds in my fabric. What you're gonna do first is you're gonna do your stay stitching lines. You're gonna do it along the center back, and then you're going to do it uh, along the front. And what you're gonna do is then you're going to turn your seam allowance in and press. So I sometimes will use my stay stitching line if I do it at about four eighths of an inch and then I fold over using that stitching line as a guide to make sure that I'm pressing exactly where I need to. And once you press in your fold line, then you're going to go ahead and tuck the raw edge until it meets that fold line and then you're going to press. You're gonna do the same thing to the center back and then you're gonna stitch close to the edge. Then you're gonna grab your front and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to press your 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're going to tuck and press your raw edge and stitch along the edge. Okay, now that we have stitched our front and our center back, we can go ahead and set the center back, uh, the back piece to the side, we're gonna go ahead and pin our front to our side front. So with right sides facing, of course, grab your pins. You're gonna first pin at your notches. So you should have notches on both pieces. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pin at the bottom. And I'm gonna pin at the top. And then I'll go ahead and pin in between and see how much we need to ease. I can probably just sort of stretch a little bit as I sew to ease that in. If you have a whole lot, let's say that um, your side front has quite a bit of ease that you need to uh, place onto your front piece, you can do either clips, make little tiny clips along that piece so that it spreads on the front so that it spreads a little bit more to accommodate the ease in that rounded area. But I think I can just, uh, pin and stretch a little bit as I sew. 
Okay, so now you're gonna head to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch this down using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're gonna go ahead and pin and sew your other side front to your front the same way. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach front to back at the side seam. As you can see, I surged my raw edges. If you have a serger, you should also serge your edges. I'm gonna go ahead and pin right sides are facing. I'm gonna match my notch on my side seams and pin. You're gonna pin both of your front and backs together, and then you're gonna take it to your sewing machine. You're going to stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, and then go ahead and serge your raw edges. Okay, once you've done that, you can go ahead and set your front and backs uh, to the side for a minute. We're gonna go ahead and work on our sleeve. So you'll notice on your sleeve pattern, you have several pleats. <laughs> you're gonna go ahead and make sure that you have marked all of those pleats so that we can start uh, folding and pressing and then stitching them down. Along the top, we're going to be folding over three quarters of an inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna show you that on mine now. So I've gone ahead and I have surged the raw edge. The reason I do that is because I find it easier to turn. And then what you're gonna do is turn over that three quarters of an inch allowance. What I do is I fold the entire three quarters of an inch and then I press that quarter inch to the inside and give it one final press. You're gonna go ahead to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch this down close to the edge. So I've already done mine here so that you guys can see. So I have folded and folded under again, and then I have stitched very close to the edge. I have also gone ahead and basted my pleats together. And so what you're gonna do is you're going to take your piece and remember that your pleats are going up, okay? So you wanna make sure that the cap of your sleeve is up and you're going to be matching those breaking lines. I just make a lot of notches. I make a notch at each breaking point of my pleat and then I just go ahead and fold and I give it a little press. Now, obviously this works better with certain fabrics. I'm working with a linen, so it works fantastic because it holds that press. But if not, uh, if your fabric doesn't hold a press very well, then you might just wanna go ahead and pin it in place. And this is just to help me as I'm sewing it together. I do that for both sides and then as I'm sewing on the machine, I just turn, fold my pleat in place. And again, like I said, you can go ahead and pin this together and then you can baste it. So this is what it looks like when it's pinned. And what you can do now is just head to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch this down, just baste it about three eighths of an inch from the raw edge so that your pleats stay in place. And then again, make sure that you are top stitching close to the edge of your elastic casing. Okay, so your sleeves should now have your casing at the top for your elastic and your pleats should be basted in place just like this. Um, you should have done both of them. Now you're gonna go ahead and gather the bottom of your sleeves. So you ha should have two dots that you marked on your fabric. You're gonna go ahead and create two rows of gathering stitches using the longest stitch possible on your machine. For me, I think it's a five. You're gonna do one row three eighths of an inch from the raw edge, and then you're gonna do another row a quarter inch above that. You should know already how to do two rows of gathering stitches. You're gonna do that to both of your sleeve. So remember, you're going to gather between dot and dot. Now, before we pull our gathering stitches, we're gonna go ahead and cut our elastic. So you should have pattern piece number six, which is your elastic guide. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut two pieces. Now go ahead and get uh, grab a safety pin so we can insert our elastic into our casing. All right, so I've gone ahead and grabbed my safety pin. I'm just gonna pin it to the end of one of my elastics and I'm gonna use that to help me get my, el my elastic through the casing. Now you wanna make sure that the other end of your elastic does not go inside of your casing, so at first just go slow. When your elastic is nearing the end like this, I go ahead and pin just so that I don't lose it inside and then you can continue until you reach the other end. Make sure your elastic doesn't twist or turn on you. You want it to be laying flat. 
Then go ahead and remove your safety pin and you can pin this one in place too. Now go ahead and tack this down, sewing through all layers to make sure that you secure that elastic and it doesn't come undone. You're gonna insert your elastic into the other casing and stitch down the sides the same way. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and work on our sleeve binding. So I'm gonna give you a, a different way of putting this together than the instructions tell you to do. The instructions have you stitch them together first, right? like this, right sides facing, stitching 5 eighths of an inch, then turning under and pressing half an inch. Sometimes it can be a little difficult once you've sewn it into a circle to then try and turn that half inch. So I actually do it a little backwards. What I do is I do a stitching line, that's my guide, that's half inch from the edge. I use that guide to help me turn under an even half inch. After I have pressed it, so I don't have to worry about that after I've sewn this together, then I go ahead and fold right sides facing, and then just go ahead and fold out that uh, pressed edge and pin it. Then go ahead and stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, and after you're done, it's much easier to go ahead and turn and press that last little bit, and then you have an evenly pressed edge all the way around. Okay, so before we go ahead and do our binding, we need to sew our underseam together on the uh, sleeve. So go ahead and again, matching your notches, right sides facing, go ahead and pin. You're gonna pin your other sleeve underarm seam the same way, head to your sewing machine and stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and gather our sleeve onto our sleeve binding. In case you're wondering why I serge the raw edge of my sleeve, it's not necessary because this is going to be encased in the sleeve binding, but my linen starts to fall apart <laughs> very easily. It sheds quite a bit. And so while I'm pulling my gathering stitches, I don't want it to come sort of undone. So that's the reason why I went ahead and serged. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my threads and I'm gonna start pulling and gathering. Be gentle, because you don't wanna tear or break your stitches. I sort of just gather until I can check to see if it fits. And once I know that it does, I can go ahead and tie my threads together, and then I worry about evening out my gathers. Go ahead and even out your gathers all the way around. And then I like pressing my gathers before I go ahead and pin. Okay, now with right sides facing, you're gonna go ahead and slip your sleeve to the inside of your sleeve binding. I'm gonna match my underarm seam on the sleeve to the underarm seam of my binding and pin there first. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and continue pinning around. You should have a notch somewhere on your binding that matches the notch on your sleeve hem. You're gonna go ahead, gather your other sleeve hem the same way, pin your binding onto your sleeve hem, and then we're gonna go ahead and stitch this down. We're gonna be using a half inch seam allowance, not a 5 8 inch of a seam allowance. So you're gonna stitch this down using half inch seam allowance. All right, once you've gone ahead and stitched down your seam binding, you can go ahead and remove any visible gathering stitches. That's never a problem. After you've stitched it together, you could go ahead and just pull your gathering stitches completely out uh, if they're visible. So what you're gonna do is you're going to, you're gonna press your uh, seam allowance up towards the binding, okay? And now you're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna turn this right side out so you guys can see a little better. Now you're just gonna turn your binding to the inside. And what I like to do is I like to go just past my stitching line. Now you have two options after you do this. You could either slip, uh, slip stitch this together by hand or you can try to uh, stitch in the ditch. So it really just depends uh, on what you're comfortable with. 
Now, as you can see, I'm pinning on the right side. That's because I plan to stitch in the ditch um, versus hand sewing. But again, it's totally up to you, whatever you're most comfortable with. You're gonna continue all the way around until you're done pinning this in place and you're going to pin the other sleeve the same way. Now I have it all pinned now, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and stitch in the ditch all the way around, hoping to catch the underside. Um, if you're stitching this by hand, then you're just going to be doing a slip stitch all the way around. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and pin our sleeve to our bodice. So first we're gonna go ahead and with right sides facing, go ahead and pin your underarm seams together. So match those up and pin there first. You're gonna match any dots you have, this is obviously going to extend, so I went ahead and pressed out where we had stopped stitching uh, about two inches from the edge. It says three, but I did about two. And you're going to go ahead and start pinning. I start from the underarm seam and then work my way in one direction, and then I'll sort of go back. And you should have like a little, a little dot. You should have had a big dot and a large dot. We're gonna go ahead and pin there. That's where we're gonna stop. This should be extending, right? Because that gets folded over. So that's all right. And go ahead and ease anything you need to ease in. My linen did stretch a little bit, so I need to go ahead and ease this a tad bit. And then you're gonna work your way up the other direction And then again, you're gonna stop at that dot. And pin. You're gonna pin your other sleeve to your bodice the same way. Now you're gonna to head to your sewing machine and you're just going to stitch starting at one elastic end, right? You're gonna backstitch, stitch all the way around using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, once you've gone ahead and stitched your sleeve to your bodice, I went ahead and serged my raw edges. So what you're gonna do now is that opening, right, where we sort of stop stitching, you're going to just fold it where you had pressed it already. Now before we stitch it back down, if you're gonna do your back ties, this is the time to do it. So what you're gonna do is with right sides facing, you're gonna fold your ties in half. You're going to stitch in 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, slightly stretching as you're stitching. Then you're gonna turn these right side out. All right, once you've turned your ties to the right side, we're gonna go ahead and place them on the back. Okay, you're gonna open out the hem on the back, right, the little piece that we left open. And you're gonna go ahead and right at that seam, I'm gonna place my tie. I'm gonna tack it down and then go ahead and fold over and pin. You could do this all at one time like I'm doing. Just pin the whole thing together. Okay, now you're gonna to go to your sewing machine and following your existing stitching, you're just gonna go ahead and finish stitching. Make sure to back stitch so that you can secure that. You're gonna attach your other tie the same way. Once you stitch it down, you can go ahead and pin it all together the way that I did. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna continue the stitching that you started and stopped in the front. But what I wanna do is I'm gonna bring my tie towards the front like this. So that way as I'm stitching, I will catch this and my tie will be facing to the inside, but the raw edge will be encased inside my seam. Once we've tacked on our ties, we can go ahead and stitch together our center fronts. So you're gonna go ahead and match up your notches. You should have two notches along the bottom. Go ahead and pin there and pin the other one. Now you're just gonna go ahead and baste this down. So you're gonna go ahead with 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and just baste across the bottom to attach both fronts. Okay, we've gone ahead and stitched together our center fronts. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to stitch our midriff together. So I've already done mine here. You're gonna have your front midriff and your back. And what you're gonna do is you're going to stitch them together at the side seams using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and you're gonna spread 
open your seam allowance and press. Then we're gonna go ahead and pin this to the bottom of our bodice. So you're going to be using the notched edge. I like to match my side seams first, so I'm gonna pin there. Remember, right sides are facing. It's gonna extend beyond the back, remember, because this has the open back. I'm gonna pin my other side seam. And then I'm gonna go ahead and match my notches and pin. And if you wanna pin a couple more times, you can. Now you're gonna go ahead to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Make sure to back stitch at the beginning and at the end. All right, once you have your midriff pinned to your bodice, I went ahead and pressed my seams towards my uh, midriff and I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside for just a sec. Now go ahead and grab your skirt front. We're going to uh, stitch together the center front seam. So with right sides together, you should have your notches, so obviously just pin there first. Then pin at the bottom hem and then at the top, and then if you wanna pin in between those spaces, you can. Now go ahead, head to your sewing machine. You're going to stitch together the center front seam of your skirt using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, I've already done pleats on one side of my uh, front skirt. I'm going to pin the other ones for you. And your pattern pieces have arrows on them to let you know exactly in what direction you should be folding your pleat. So you're gonna go ahead, fold and pin, and then fold. And you can always press this in place too, and pin. And now you can go ahead and baste across the top to keep your pleats in place. You have one pleat on each side of your back skirt. So you're gonna go ahead and do the pleat the exact same way on each back piece. Now you might as well do everything at one time before you head to your machine. So go ahead and grab your pockets. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and grab one pocket. You're gonna go ahead and align your notches. So what I like to do is I like to serge this together so it's nice and clean. Um, and then I go ahead and turn and do my understitching. So let's just go ahead first and pin this down. You're going to stitch using 3 8 of an inch seam allowance to stitch your pocket down to your skirt. Don't forget to baste across your pleats. You're going to attach and pin and then sew each pocket to both your back pieces, leaving your center front not sewn together yet and then on the side seams of both sides of your front skirt. Okay, I've gone ahead and stitched my pockets. I pressed my seam allowance towards my pockets. Now we can go ahead and place front to back. Grab one of your skirt back pieces and we're gonna go ahead and pin our side seams together. So I'm actually gonna start at the bottom and pin and now you should have marked notches or dots, whichever you chose to do, where you're uh, leaving in po a pocket opening. So for me, I can tell that my dot is here. So I'm gonna pin there to remind myself that that's where I need to stop. And then my other dot is here. So I'm gonna put a pin there. So now what we're gonna do is I like to start at the hem and I'm gonna stitch using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance from the bottom back stitching and then stitching up until I get to my first dot, I'm gonna back stitch and break my thread. Then you're gonna start again at your other dot, back stitch and then stitch to the top and back stitch. Remember you're leaving an opening for your hand. After you've done that, you're gonna do that obviously for both sides of your skirt. You're gonna go ahead and pin together. Let me press this out. You're gonna go ahead and pin your pocket bags together and then you'll go ahead and stitch along the edge, down the bottom, and stop and back stitch at your stitching. 
you're gonna do five eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're gonna do this for both sides. All right guys, once our side seams are sewn on our skirt, we can go ahead and attach our skirt to the bottom of our midriff. So I'm gonna go ahead and with right sides facing, again, I'm gonna pin my side seams first. Okay, once you have it pinned, go ahead to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance starting at the beginning, back stitch and stitch to the end. All right, so I've gone ahead and pressed my seam allowance up towards the midriff and we're gonna go ahead and insert our invisible zipper. So the first thing, and you know, you guys have probably seen me do this a lot of times, um, but I will still show you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and baste my center back together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up those uh, stitching lines to make sure that it's even. And I'm gonna pin. And then I'm gonna make a, uh, put a pin where my zipper is gonna stop. Okay, I'm gonna put a double pin. And then I'm gonna pin the rest of the skirt. So along the center back okay and what we're gonna do first is we're gonna start at the bottom we're gonna back stitch using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance we're going to stitch until we get to the double uh, pin we're gonna back stitch there and break our thread then starting again where our double pin is and not back stitching using a basting stitch the longest stitch available on your machine you're going to baste the rest of the way up Okay, so I'm starting at my hem, and I'm using a normal length stitch. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and back stitch, remove my double pins. I'm gonna cut my thread. Now I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to a basting stitch, and I'm gonna sew the rest of the way up. Now go to your iron and go ahead and press this seam open. Okay, now working on only the seam allowance and moving the rest of the dress to the left of me, I'm gonna go ahead and place my zipper, making sure that the center of the zipper is also along the center seam. So I'm gonna go ahead and also make sure that my zipper pull is all the way up. So I use a longer um, zipper than necessary so that I can have my zipper pull completely out of the way. And we're just going to base this down. Now you're going to turn this around and you're going to work your way back up. Now turn this to the right side and you're going to go ahead and remove the basting stitches from where we started to the very top. Okay, once you remove your basting stitches, go ahead and open your zipper. And then I'm gonna reach to the inside so I can grab that zipper pull and push it completely out of my way. Now I'm gonna switch my presser foot to my zipper foot. Now we're gonna start stitching close to the edge and go back to a normal length stitch. And you're going to slightly open your coils as you stitch. Back stitch to the beginning and at the end. Now you're going to turn this around and work from the bottom up. Now you can go ahead and close your zipper. Once you close up your zipper, your seam lines should match and you should not see your zipper. Okay, let's go ahead and open up our zipper. The only thing for us uh, to do now is to do the facing for the inside and also uh, the hem of your skirt. So I'll leave the hem up to you guys, but I do wanna go ahead and attach our midriff facing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up, making sure that everything is facing down. We're only working with the seam allowance at this point. 
and I've already gone and sewn together the midriff facing at the side seams the same way that we did the midriff for the actual dress and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this all the way to the end right because we need to encase this part of the zipper and I'm going to pin then I'm going to match up the side seams so you'll notice that this is right side to wrong side because it's facing down, but then on the very edge, you'll see it's right side to right side. So I just wanna make sure that you don't get confused. I'm gonna pin. Okay, once you have it all pinned, you're gonna go ahead and take this to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch through all layers using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So what I like to do is since it's already pinned, I like to have the side that I've already stitched facing up and I'm just gonna follow that existing stitching line. Okay, now once you have it stitched, I went ahead and stitched the ends down too, as you can see, and I have the bottom of my facing pressed up with 5 eighths of an inch allowance. That way when I turn this over and I wanna stitch in the ditch, it's nice and clean. You can go ahead and trim some of this now, especially that corner where, if especially if you have an extending zipper, like I did. And you can trim some of this just so that you can avoid some bulk. Now you can go ahead and turn this to the right side. Pull out that zipper. Okay, you wanna make sure that at the very top of your zipper that it's nice and even, one's not higher than the other. And what you're gonna do now is you're going to press your facing down. Okay, you wanna press your facing down so that it's just past your stitching line, especially if you plan to stitch in the ditch. You can also slip stitch this, um, but I like to stitch in the ditch, makes it uh, faster, sometimes a little cleaner. So you're gonna go ahead and press your facing all the way down. Okay, so I'm gonna press. And then as I press, because I'm gonna stitch in the ditch, I'm just gonna feel to make sure that the fold is just past my stitching line and I'm gonna pin from the right side. Once you have your facing pinned down, you can again either slip stitch it closed or head to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch in the ditch. All right, once you have stitched in the ditch, you should have caught the bottom edge of the inside of the facing. You can turn your dress right side out. Now the only thing left for you to do is to try it on so that you see if you like the length of the dress. If you wanna shorten it, you can shorten it. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna press up the hem allowance and then stitch and you are all done. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this sew along. Remember to follow on Instagram if you're not following already, at Style, And please make sure and tag me in your photos using hashtag MimiGPatterns. Until next time, peace.